They suck. Versatility. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, uh. Taylor Carter? Like, they shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't, don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, uh, Jayla Carter? Like, they shit on you. Tell them. Oh, my goodness. Did he say they, they cock out on them? Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here and is with my buddy, Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Welcome to day number two of Free Agent Frenzy. Yeah. Um, it's pretty depressing at points being a Dallas Cowboy fan um, seeing that teams are out there doing their best to try and better their team and their situation you know it's kind of funny I touched on this last night on my uh, fireside chat that it's amazing how the most valuable sports franchise in the world the team with the highest amount of uh, attendance. A team that's worth over $2 billion to the next franchise of any sport. Over $2 billion worth more. $9 billion. And the crazy thing is, it doesn't matter what year it is. You can go back to Tony Romo's days in here. Somehow, when it comes to free agency, we are always broke. We always hear, there is no money to spend. We weren't the worst shaped team in Cap Hell. You know, the New Orleans Saints were like $73 million dollars in the red somehow they made a way and I can guarantee you they'll find a way to sign other players the Dallas Cowboys are the only team the only team of 32 not to make a move now I get it I get it Stephen Jones has the philosophy of if you're dealing with tier one free agents you are going to overspend and I get it I, I think that the Eagles overspent on Saquon. I am not sold on Saquon Barkley being um, the back that he gets the credit for. People will say I'm a hater. People will say if he had signed with Dallas, he would be saying a different tune. No, I would not. For me, looking at Saquon with the injury pass that he's had, with how he usually starts out great to begin a season, and by the end of the year, he's either broke down or just not effective. That is a tendency that you see. And spending $12 million on running back, yeah, that's, that's more than I think you should spend. And I've never been on the bandwagon to get Saquon. Derrick Henry supposedly has an offer from the Baltimore Ravens at $6.5 million. When you think about the contract where the Cowboys signed Zeke Elliott to $90 million, when you think about the contract the Cowboys signed Marion Barber to back in the day for $53 million, when you think about the franchise tag that you paid Tony Pollard last year at ten and a half, I'm sorry, $10.2 million, six and a half does not seem like a lot. But the Cowboys going into free agency this was their plan their plan is we're going to draft another back 
and we will p- allow up to three and a half million dollars for a running back. That's our ceiling. That's our budget. We are not going to spend a lot for a running back. They were in conversations with Zach Moss. And ultimately, they said that the $4 million that he signed for to go to Cincinnati was too much to pay for a running back. Now, I want you to understand that right now, currently, we have Hunter Lipke, who is a fullback, and we have Deuce Vaughn, who's about five foot six, as running backs for the Dallas Cowboys. Understanding that this is a Dallas Cowboys team that rode Hall of Fame running backs to Super Bowl wins. And Tony Dorsett and the all-time leading rusher in Emmett Smith. I'm sorry, yeah, in Emmett Smith. And to completely devalued or refuse to spend any money on a running back says it all. Derrick Henry offered six and a half million from Baltimore, a team that was in the AFC Championship. It's not the contract that he wanted, which means you could probably get him for that seven million. That you know, I said five, six, seven million dollars, I think you could get Derrick Henry, which is about right. He'd probably give you a discount to come to the Cowboys because He's got two houses here. It's America's team, which I don't know what that means anymore. But the Cowboys will do nothing on that. So, I got my poker chips over here. All in is when you take all of the money and you push it into the middle of the table. And you make a bet that either you lose everything... Or you win big. This is the Cowboys bet. It doesn't even cover the ante. I get it. They don't want to spend money on tier ones. We're still out there with players that can help the team. The thing that bothers me is Jerry Jones literally said when he was asked about the culture of the Cowboys and his response was if running the football and stopping the run are culture then we have a culture problem. So it's not like we don't know that we have a problem. We do. Your solution is three and a half million dollars and draft a guy in the draft. You do not have enough draft picks to fill in all the holes. You just don't. So, is this what they mean by all in? So, Derrick Henry's out there, and we know six and a half is what Baltimore's offered him. Joe Mixon is out there, and Aaron Jones. And I bet you, I bet you, All three of them would like to play in Dallas and would probably offer you a better deal than elsewhere. But the Cowboys will not even entertain it. They just won't. The only team, the only team not to try and make a move. Um, I spent nine hours nine and a half hours sitting here shout out to ewin because thank god this chair is comfortable i was able to get up out of this chair with without being in any pain whatsoever which is good when you're 58 years old but i sat here for nine hours hearing the commanders signing player after player after player hearing the eagles signing player after player listening to the Eagle fans and the 49er fans and everybody literally laughing at the Cowboys because we are literally a laughing stock. I don't know exactly what a laughing stock is, 
but dare say they're laughing at us. This is crazy. I don't know what happened to the Jerry Jones that we used to have that understood that bringing in guys like Jay Novacek and Ray Donaldson and Deion Sanders and Nate Newton in free agency were key players on the Cowboys winning Super Bowls that making trades for guys like Charles Haley were difference makers. It just seems like the Cowboys are these money misers that are literally trying to hold on to every nickel because the world end of the world is coming and they're going to need every penny to fly to Mars or something. They take no chances. They take no risks. And they seem to be okay with it. As a Cowboy fan, this sucks. And we deserve all of the talking heads out there laughing at us. Chris Canty, he rips us a new one. He was smart enough to get out and get himself a ring with the Giants. And Tad Prescott, even he's ripping them. Let's go to the tape. Yeah, so let me look at my list here of, um... yeah, I don't see anything. What does all in actually mean if you don't do anything? Just so I understand this, guys. <laughs> Well, maybe all in means we're going to figure out our quarterback's contract situation before we address anything else because he's the most important piece of this puzzle. Well, they got about a day and a half now to figure that out. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's, I'm just throwing some things out there. Maybe that's where they're going with this. Yeah, but here's what doesn't make sense. The salary cap went up $31 million. So everybody had more money to spend than they were budgeting for than they expected. And for the Dallas Cowboys to sit on their hands and seemingly do nothing doesn't make any sense. Like the Dallas Cowboys, this was the time for them to get aggressive. I mean, for your big move or your 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 big, uh, I mean, priority this offseason was trying to sign Zach Moss, who went to the Cincinnati Bengals on a two-year, $8 million deal. I just, I feel like you're missing the mark. I think this is the Dallas Cowboys overvaluing their draft picks and prioritizing paying their own and trying to operate under the old mantra that the Green Bay Packers used to do once upon a time. Only problem is the Green Bay Packers had Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers as their quarterbacks. You got Dak Prescott. And that's not to disparage Dak because he had a fine season. He was an all-pro but there are levels to this. And for the, the Dallas Cowboys not to try to get aggressive while they're at the tail end of their window with this current core of players to win a championship just doesn't make sense to me, Ev. Now, they could, okay, I agree based on the words that Jerry Jones put out there, right? We're just following his lead. If he never said that, and you told me that the Cowboys didn't make any big moves on day one, I could spin it and say, well, maybe they're sitting back. We've talked about Bobby Wagner, linebacker for the Seahawks. Maybe they were smart to not bring back Tony Pollard or to not overpay for Zach Moss. Because, look, Joe Mixon is now available. Aaron Jones, Packers running back, unexpectedly available. That the great teams usually do things before free agency and after day one. Yeah. Look at the Chiefs. Yeah, you usually don't want to get involved in the first 72 hours of free agency. And there's still time for the Dallas Cowboys to do some things, right? We talked about them addressing the interior of their defense, addressing their defensive line, uh, addressing their linebacker. Like, you can still go out and sign a guy like Bobby Wagner. You can sign recently released Eric Armstead from the San Francisco 49ers. Both of those would be huge upgrades for that defense, that front seven, and I think that puts them closer to being able to win a championship. Now, I don't know what those moves would cost, but presumably it'd be less than what we're seeing come off the board right now mm -hmm. when teams are paying an absolute premium for guys that are just hitting the free agent marketplace. So I, I'm not going to panic just yet, but make no mistake about it. This is not the offseason where the Dallas Cowboys rely on the whole draft and develop mantra and only want to worry about extending their own guys. They need to go outside of the organization and look for help to, to fortify some of the deficiencies that are on this team that allow them to get embarrassed at home by the Green Bay Packers. 
They absolutely have to do that. That game in the wild card round this year showed them that the Dallas Cowboys are further away from the championship than anybody anticipated a team that's won 12 games in three consecutive seasons would be. Despite being so bombastic and larger than life, Jerry Jones is surprisingly patient in certain arenas in his football life. But I did expect the Dallas Cowboys to act with a little bit more of a sense of urgency, knowing that your quarterback's contract situation has not worked out, and neither is your head coach. They have a very short w window and a finite amount of time to capitalize on the talent that they've acquired and win a Super Bowl. And knowing that, I expected them to be a little bit more aggressive. So all of that, all fair conversation that we've had, all measured, all reasoned, between the three of us here. Now let's get a little wild because they've asked us to. What do I mean by that? This is what the Cowboys don't need. This tweet from Tad Prescott, the brother of Dak Prescott. <laughs> yeah. So if it wasn't clear already, it is now the Eagles have the best front office in the NFL. Hashtag, how about them Cowboys? I believe that was right after Saquon signed with the, uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles. But wait, there's more. Terrence Parsons Jr., <laughs> That's Micah's brother. One thing the Cowboys won't do this year is have me believing we actually going to do anything like make an NFC championship game. I promise y'all, you won't hear it from me. This is what they don't need. I don't know how many yep. times we've sat here and had the conversation about star athletes having to say to their family, listen, I'm in the public eye. You're not. I need to be the only voice in this family. You cannot speak on my behalf because what happens are people like Small, Cece, and Evan will take your opinions as my opinions. And whether that's fair or not, Cece, you've told the story about having conversations with your family about, hey, you've got to resist this stuff because it's my voice, not yours here. This doesn't help. This does not no, help. No, it doesn't help, but what what, what are you going to do? Like, that's the part. You got to shut him down. Well, how do you shut him down? You can't control him. Dak can't control him. His brother is his own man. Like, I mean, it's not going to be to the detriment of Dak Prescott. I think Dak is going to get his money, whether the Dallas Cowboys give it to him or not. So, I mean, what, what, what is the downside of Tad Prescott speaking his mind? He's going to get a podcast that's going to be popular. He's going to get more impressions on social media. <laughs> like uh, these, these yeah, days, people are monetizing that kind of stuff. So I, I just, like, I, I get it. it. It makes it more uncomfortable, which is why if you're Jerry Jones, you have to reconsider how you've operated, how you've done business. I mean, from everything from your weekly hits on local radio to giving your head coach and quarterback long-term security so there aren't these looming questions that feel like this ominous cloud over the 2024 season before it even gets kicked off. So that's the scary part about Dallas. It feels like there are these other things that are detracting away from the focus being on competing at the highest levels and your guys being at their best when it matters the most. Yeah, and having family members tweet out disparaging things about the team doesn't help matters at all. No, and is. even though you're right, these guys are their own men and they have their platform and can say what they want, it's at a detriment to their family members who are playing because it's out for public consumption. And it's prompting us to talk about it. It doesn't get them any closer to winning a Super Bowl by having them say this. It certainly doesn't take any of the circus out of the Dallas Cowboys by having family members be disparaging about the team. And I don't know if you're Dak Prescott, how, for example, how you shut something like that down, but I think I would be having a pretty pointed conversation with my family members saying, you're not doing anything to help my situation by saying all of That's this. That's exactly how I feel. Like, you know like Listen, do you want to be a part of this? You want to be a part of my everyday... And, and my response to this is, is, if you literally say, we're not going to get a running back that will help our situation, I will say that the Cowboys aren't doing anything to help their quarterback in their situation and this team to win a Super Bowl. You know, the thing about running back, and I get it, they're, they're trying to be frugal and so on, and maybe there's a plan here that we have more budgeted to try and bring in a linebacker, and you know we have more budgeted in to try and bring in a playmaking wide receiver or defensive lineman. If that's the case, then great. But what we've seen so far here is, is we don't have a center, we don't have a left tackle, we don't have any running backs, and your budget to try and fix the situation is not there. Three and a half million dollars. Four million dollars was too much for you to pay for a running back. You went from 19 million dollar cap hit with Zeke, 10 million dollars with Tony Pollard, to saying, eh, we're only going to spend three. If it's not clear, 
that you're not going to do anything to help your quarterback. I don't know that you look at this and say, I want to be a cowboy because of what? Dak can get the money anywhere. But there's not a willingness to actually try to really push all the chips in. All in for the Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'm disappointed, as can be. And I'm debating on whether or not I want to do what I did yesterday, which was sit here for nine hours, live streaming, while other teams make efforts. They may not all work out. In fact, a lot of them will end up being bust, and we'll look back later and say, damn, ha ha! But at least they are trying. Peace.